And this is going to relate to, you know, tribes, tribalism, and so forth. But we, most of, most of these people who think they're red-pilled, they don't have a flying, flipping clue about how deep the rabbit hole goes and what's been actually going on in history. For 100% fact, the, the Protestant Reformation and the figures in the Protestant Reformation are every bit as sinister as, you know, the Charlemagne generation in that era. 100%. The Munster Rebellion was an attempt, look at the wording, by radical Anabaptists. Now, before we go any further, I want to point out what else have we been looking at in these discussions over the past week or so. We've been talking about sinister creepy people who are moving among us like slimy little snake shapeshifters you know I'll, I'll use david ike's terminology th this time because i don't even know what else to call them they are like reptilians shape-shifting reptilians they are because they're moving around our circles pretending to be working for our folk and what they're doing is they're trying to make our indigenous worldview fit the Abrahamic pattern. This is for programming of thought. And this is what I cannot emphasize more, more strongly enough, um, that this has been going on for centuries, if not much, much, much longer than that. And there is this little back and forth. There's like a scurrying back and forth, making sort of paganistic versions of Christianity when we're still overtly pagan to try to lure us that way. Then going through these purges to remove the paganism. Then um, anybody who won't let go of their culture because they know it's their actual heritage. Well, how about this? How about we will manipulate your myths and make them fit the Abrahamic um, pattern, really, the Abrahamic format. That the Puritans had some very close associations with another Abrahamic religious group. I'll leave it at that. You can do your own research. Um, lo and behold, the Munster Rebellion. Now look how they describe these Anabaptists as radical. So I already noticed this with the English Revolution. I already noticed that then, but it's just being reinforced. These Protestants were just the forerunners of the Bolsheviks. They just hadn't switched to, com to atheistic communism yet because these things are unrolled in stages. And so they, these Protestants were like, hey, you know, these Catholics are actually still pagan, so we're going to purge them of all their pagan ideas, their pagan practices. We're going to find anyone who's doing pagan things and burn them alive, because essentially we want to instate Mosaic law in Europe. That's what they did. Now, look very closely at these names. Melchior? In the Middle Ages, if your name was Melchior, that meant you weren't an indigenous European. Melchior Hoffman, who initiated adult baptism. But not to get off topic, but just going along with what I was saying earlier about Claude Le Coteau and his research that demonstrates that spiritual activity was alive and well under Catholic Europe because, because Catholicism was not a real religion. It was just the government. We were still pagans, Thai soul. Like the Filja is actually part of our soul. And that we understood that we had one spirit that stayed in our body, but another one that we could send out. And and apparently there's all this recorded activity in the Middle Ages where people could recognize like the souls of their neighbors walking around at night and doing things and stuff like that. And um, that was part of what the Reformation was doing was attacking anybody who had these extrasensory gifts or knew how to do all this stuff and all of this supernatural stuff but also indigenous pagan stuff they were it, it was it was really a dysgenic purge to purge the people who had these gifts there were forced adult baptisms and it 
It just made me think, based on what Claude Lacoteau was saying, because there was something in that that I was reading the other night that made it sound like this is there's something occult to this, like the baptism and the invocation of the Holy Spirit does have an occult pre- uh, prevalence, and that it does something to bind um, our extrasensory ability, our soul work, our soul journey to lock it down and um i do think i i I know this might sound kooky but it's been in my mind for a long time that um when people have the ability to get together to do reverse baptisms and um expelling the yahweh demon and expelling you know the the yeshua trojan horse out of our bodies it seems to me there's something to this and that is also why so many people who leave christianism have a very hard time shifting their paradigm opening themselves up to things that they've been programmed against and the mystical and all that oh and look eschatological anabaptism now the harafin folk network took down their talk with druba immediately when it was done airing but if if you happen to catch it as i did but it dave and and mark now several people have noticed this and brought it to my attention um, in multiple places because they're actually on this mis- mission right now mark came on my channel and started talking about damnation and i didn't even really catch it because i was monitoring the chat other people brought it up to me and i was just like oh weird didn't really it didn't really don't click in my head but i was getting text messages from friends on facebook i'm no longer on facebook and they're sending me screenshots of Mark Purrier's posts where he's just going on and on about judgment, damnation, whatever. And so then also people showed me where Mark's tr- Mark Purrier was trying to insist that all world cultures have damnation and whatever. And Dave kept using the term eschatology over and over again. Eschatology. Well, see, everybody else listening doesn't know what eschatology means. <laughs> I took a literature of the Bible course that was focused on revelation, so I know exactly what eschatology means. The only people who have ever obsessed over eschatology are Saul of Tarsus, because the sky is falling, the sky is falling. If you don't, if you don't accept, you know, the Yahweh demon, you will burn in hell forever, and Yeshua could come at any minute. And what this is, this is the the emphasis on eschatology is designed for mind control because it's to scare the shit out of you so that you'll get in line and do whatever they say the part of theology concerned with the final events of history or the ultimate destiny of humanity this concept is commonly referred to as end of the world or end times but it's directly related to christianism it's sinister and creepy as fuck And most people can't tell when this monkey business is going on because they're not looking closely at history and how these patterns repeat and how these people have been doing this right along under different guises. And this circles back to what I was saying about the false dichotomy. These people didn't play around. The Protestants were also convert or die. Because if you didn't, if you were caught being a papist, that was considered treason or witchcraft or whatever and you'd be burned alive the protestants were violent as can be they were every bit as bad as the bolsheviks just start looking into it as and so what were they also pushing eschatological anabaptism it is sick then you see all these pictures of white people doing this to black people in the americas i'm going to tell you something quite boldly and and i can't actually <laughs> I can't actually say everything right here, but it would behoove people to do some more research. When you see pictures of jackasses with pliers, you know, torturing a black man tied to a post, I'm willing to venture that they weren't necessarily our guys. They're probably the same people who did it to us. Oh, here's a nice, uh, minaret because remember christianity and islam are exactly the same thing after the german peasants war a forceful attempt to establish theocracy theocracy a 
forceful attempt. This is militaristic. So what we have is we have a repeat of the Charlemagne bullshit with convert or die campaigns against the Saxons. It's a repeat of the Muhammad bullshit, convert or die. A forceful attempt to establish theocracy. The Protestants were just doing the same thing. And I would venture to argue that atheistic communism was just a new theocracy because they did have their own secular state religion. Please watch my video, Charlemagne's Mosque. Here, the group had gained considerable influence, pay attention, through the adhesion of Bernard Rothman. Doesn't say anything about the origin of his name. They're telling us only that he was an Anabaptist leader. There's a parallel here, guys. Because these Christians looked at Bernard Rothman and they thought, oh, well, he's just one of us. See, he's a Christian. You're really flipping naive if you think they wouldn't be scurrying around in pagan circles saying, hey, guys, I'm a pagan. See, look, listen to me. Speak your lingo. And all of our people are just like, oh, okay. God. But you know what? That is why they killed off all of our wise ones and our reichs. That was the first thing they did. And then the Carls were tortured if they didn't get in line. All it takes is one generation of brainwashing and purging anybody who thinks too much. And you've got a compliant population. And that's what we've got right now. And we do have wise ones and we do have reichs that are being reborn into this generation and they are working for their people but you need to listen when they tell you smarten up because not everybody claiming to work for our people is working for our people they might be a bernard rothman in disguise i'm a pagan guys what do they tell us about him oh he was a charismatic Anabaptist leader. What does charismatic mean? That means, that means, <laughs> I have a big personality. I'll get you riled up. I'll get all the guys involved. Yeah, guys. Yeah, I'm a big personality. I'm charismatic. It's a trick, you guys. It's a trick. So you will find our own guys caught up in it because it, it's. This is why ideology matters so much. Vitriolic opponent of Catholicism. This is exactly like the alt-right versus the left. Some of your favorite figures on the biggest alt-right YouTube channels. Oh, wake up. Wake up. And so our people, our people who knew that the Catholic Church had problems, are looking at these charismatic leaders and vitriolic opposition of Catholicism and they're just getting caught up in it and they're like yeah 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 well, I hate the Catholic Church too just like they're doing in the alt-right about the left a writer of pamphlets just like I'm a publisher I'm a publisher of Norse mythology I I just I just have this weird obsession with eschatology and apocalypticism and damnation and judgment that's all <laughs> give me a break published by his ally and wealthy wool merchant uh the pamphlets denounced Catholicism from a radical Lutheran pers uh, perspective but soon started to proclaim that the Bible called for absolute equality of man in all matters, including the distribution of wealth. So please tell me again how these people are different from Bolsheviks. They engaged in mass slaughter. They, were, they tried to overthrow the government and they wanted a distribution of wealth. They renamed Munster Guess what they renamed Munster, guys? New Jerusalem. They had their own disciples, apparently. <laughs> and then they introduced this adult baptism. Oh, iconoclasm. 
The social belief in the importance of the destruction of icons and other images or monuments, most frequently for religious or political reasons. Now, remember, religious reasons and political reasons are the same because none of these are real religions. They're just systems of mind control. Uh, people who engage in or support iconoclasm are called iconoclasts. The read uh, K- Catherine Nixie's um, "The Darkening Age," because the original Christians, before they even had any power, they were essentially the jihadis of their day, and they ran around ancient Rome doing this prior to the Muslims. Then the Muslims did the same thing. These are the same religion. These Christians were never our people. We have been tricked. They were foreigners. It was literally a takeover and an enslavement. That's what happened. So when Charlemagne went up and chopped down Ermansul and chopped down Donner's Oak, and then you've got these dickheads in the alt-right gloating about it because, muh, you pagans. They're too dumb, they're too low IQ to realize that this is the same thing Well, number one is the Protestants who would go and do it to the Catholics, but it's also happening right now with all these liberals who are pushing Marxism, who are demanding that we tear down the statuary to our cultural heroes. So this iconoclasm is happening right now under liberal Marxism. It's the same people. It's the same tactics. All property was to be held in common. These were communists, you guys. These Anabaptist Lutherans, radical Lutherans, were communists. New Zion. Hmm. While we're at it, while we're at it, I might as well. I might as well. (laughs) Because I don't remember the winged lion as, like, a big part of Germanic culture. I don't remember the winged lion. I'm going to argue that they weren't in recent living memory. (laughs) They're like, they were extinct for like 10,000 years. (laughs) So the lion as we know it, as represented here, is pretty much uh, uh, like a figure that comes from the African continent. And of course, we know the Levant has a lot of interchange with North, North Africa. Egypt turns up in the Old Testament and the New Testament. And Egypt, of course, like throughout the Mediterranean and that part of the world, the royalty did always import these wild animals from the jungles of Africa. I mean, we know that. Huh. Who else used the winged lion? Because I don't think, I've never heard of it being Norse myth. But here you go. Here's the lion with wings right here. It's exactly like what we just saw. So where did it come from? Oh, Sumeria. Sumeria? That doesn't sound European to me. Okay. Oh, the first beast in the first vision of the biblical prophet Daniel resembled a winged lion. Daniel. Old Testament Hebrew lore. Oh, okay, so it's not in it's not in Norse lore, but it is in the Old Testament Hebrew mythology. The winged lion was the heraldic symbol of Mark the Evangelist. Really? Oh, here we go. The lion of Saint Mark, representing the evangelist Saint Mark. So we have I'm just a, I'm like you guys. I'm one of you. I'm, I just, I'm just really into damnation and eschatology and the end of the world and, uh, damnation. And my symbol on my website is literally the same symbol used for St. Mark. All we have to do is look, you guys. Maybe we need our wise ones and our wise ones with the spine and the backbone of a Reich who has the balls to call out this shit when they see it. Because this, I'm not standing for this on my watch. On my tribe. They're not who they say they are. 
Mark per year is using the symbol of Mark the Evangelist, traditionally ascribed author of the Gospel of Mark. Oh, he's another writer. Oh, here he is writing his text. I'm just writing. I'm just writing for you guys. <laughs> here, I'm just writing the Asatru Edda. I'm just writing an Odinist Edda for you. <laughs> My name's Mark, Mark the Evangelist, promoting the uh, eschatological end of the world. By the way, you're all damned. You're except damnation, guys, because damnation is coming for you. I'm going to write a book about it. Stay tuned. Stay tuned for my book. Here it comes. My trusty sidekick, the lion by my side. Are you fucking kidding me? Here you go, and here we have the timeline of the biblical Abrahamic timeline spelled right out for us. Past, hearts in the past, minds on the present, eyes on the future. That the Germanics were a past-focused culture. The future is a mirage. It doesn't exist. Every thought that we have dictates our actions, and our actions is how the future unrolls. This is why ideology matters. These religions are subversive. These ideologies are subversive and they use these religions to drive social engineering. But because we had to look into uh, Victor Rydberg, which Mark the Evangelist is, is promoting heavily, I happened to find out that Mark, or that Victor Rydberg was associated with Benjamin Kidd. And guess what Victor Rydberg and Benjamin Kidd both understood? They understood that the evolution of society and modern civilization is caused not by reason or science, but by the force of religious belief. Your ideology influences your thought. Your thoughts will influence your actions. Now think about this on a mass scale. This is how social engineering works. And Victor Rydberg and Benjamin Kidd wrote books about it. And his symbol is the winged lion. And there he is with his fancy books. <laughs> Gee, suddenly it all makes sense. So what I'm going to tell you right now is a difficult truth. It is a difficult truth. And I want to be very careful so that I'm not misrepresented on this. Now, when Christianity came out, Christianity was explicitly anti-ethnic. Christianity came in and basically encouraged people to betray their ethno-spiritual obligations. And so they no longer participated in their communal activities, religious activities, with their wider tribe, kinship group, and their family. And it encouraged them to walk away from their devotional, their spiritual devotional um, obligations to their ancestors. Now, later in history, we know for a fact that anyone who was caught communing with their ancestors was labeled a Satan worshiper because these spirits were labeled demons when in fact they were our own ancestors. Think about that. It's no different than what the liberals are doing right now, demonizing our ancestors. As focused tribalists, you know, obviously we recognize how this is wrong that Christianity pulled people away from their kin and their family. Unfortunately, we have a situation where many of our Christian family would reject us if they knew that we were leaving Christianity. It's crucial to wrap your head around reincarnation is because what these elites know that they've been hiding from us is that this is this journey, this this fight transcends lifetimes and our enemies understand 100% um, that they have lived before and they will live again. And they, they I, 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 I would bet money that all of this stuff that we hear about the occult activities of the elites and this and that, they're accessing their, their, their memories and they're just carrying on with it. If you can wrap your head around this and you can realize we have lived before, we've been through this before and we're in a fight that we're not, we might not see the full resolution in our lifetime. But that's not a reason to not be concerned. That's also why going back to tribalist worldview, natural worldview, ethnic worldview, indigenous worldview is so important. 
this idea that we should be holding hands with Christians is wrong. I would, though, encourage r raising up the next generation with a very strong grounding. Because remember, we're going to be going on this campaign, <laughs> maybe for several more lifetimes, because we've been in it for at least 2,000 years. The... Um, what we're looking at in my in my little network here, it, it does it does look like it goes beyond that. Um, but as it primarily affects Northern Europeans, the most predominantly and the most immediately, we're talking the past one thousand to two thousand years, Caesar through Charlemagne. That what Paul was doing was breaking people from their ethnic tribe, which was extended family. Look into the Roman gens, the Greek ethnos, the Teutonic kindred. Paul of Tarsus, and I would venture Mark the Evangelist, had a mission to pull people out of their familial tribal groups and bring them into the uni tribe. If you can wrap your head around reincarnation and you can wrap your head around the rest of this, our tribe exists outside of time. It's eternal until which point the last tribesman dies on this planet. So long as there are people here who, who hail from the Teutonic tribes, our tribe exists outside of time. Special way of dress or their special holidays. They've been able to do this. Other tribes have been able to do this internationally. Until which point that we have the ethnostate back, 100% Greater Teutonia is a virtual nation that we are citizens of. Holding hands with white Christians just because ma unity. This is subversive. This is anti-tribal. This is the the cause of our downfall and this is the point in time we need to be thinking like a tribe in diaspora snakes in our midst i'm utterly utterly disappointed in some of the people in in our own circles for sitting here like a bunch of cucks like a bunch of wimps like oh I can't get involved with drama. This is not drama. This is an attempt to manipulate us and drive us um, in the wrong direction. So 100% this needs to be called out. The only group I'm prepared right now to call out is the Norna Society because it's very blatantly obvious. And the more we look into it, the more obvious it gets. Mark the Evangelist per year is up to something. Me, right, right when me and my team were blowing the lid off of what they were up to. So if you're going to come at me and you're up to no good and you are a subversive and you are attempting to lead my tribe off in, in a, another direction... <laughs> I'm not going to stand for that. So, uh, on that note, on that note, keep your eyes wide open. There is, there is still really, really good things happening right now. Even if we're upset with politics, even if we're upset with everything else, this is a period of change. This is a period of change. And we're going to teeter-totter one way or the other. If I have to say it one more time... Ideology influences thought. Thought dictates your behavior and your actions. The future is just simply the present unrolling in real time. Therefore, it is crucial to double down on ideology. So on that note, everybody, it is time to retribalize. It is time to think in terms of um, a tribe in diaspora. And remember that the fight that we're in, we have been in this fight previous lives we will probably be still fighting it in the next life <laughs> but that doesn't mean we don't fight now with everything we've got the most important way for us to fight right now is waking up more of our kids